let me uh, let me go ahead and call the meeting to order at 12.01 um, and uh, start with introductions. Uh, I'm Ron Terry, Chair of the Exemptions Committee. We have Robin Kay, Maka'ala Ka'omoana, and Onao Nathon from the Exemptions Committee. Thank you all for, for being here today. Uh, um, Chair Terry, yes. uh, just a reminder that the new Chapter 92 provisions are in effect, so we do have to state, um, each member needs to state whether or not anybody else is in their location. Okay, can we do it as a whole here? Can we say, is there anybody at any location? I think we need to do it individually, but Jody, um, if you can opine, I, I believe the guidance last time is that we each have to say it individually. Okay, Jody, is Jody there? Um, she's not responding, but maybe, maybe we can just go around and, oh, there she is. Uh, yeah, it's probably cleaner to go have everybody individually introduce themselves and say if there's anyone attending the meeting with them in the room. Okay, and does this apply to members of the public as well? Uh, I don't know. Is, is there members of the public who well, are I attending? Mean, it, yeah, there's a lot of people here that are for the meeting. Do they all have to say the same thing? Yes, yeah. The, the, it's to create the record of who is attending the meeting so that um, everybody knows who's who's at the meeting. Okay, that'll take about an hour. So let's do it. Uh, let's start with Robin. You're on mute. Robin, you're on mute. Yes, hi, sorry. Technologically incompetent. I wish somebody was here to help me with this. No, I'm Robin Kay, I'm by myself. Okay, Makaala. Makaala from Kauai, I'm by myself. Onauna? Yeah, Onauna phone, um, no one is here with me. Okay, uh, there is no one here with me for the record. Um, um, Les, do we have any members of the public there? No, I'm in room 405 at the Land Use Commission, and there was no one here in the room with me, and the cameras are not functioning, so we're still recording this meeting via Zoom on my computer, so hopefully we'll get technical assistance to try to get the cameras working in this room. Okay. Um, is uh, Attorney General Yi, are we in violation of any uh, law here? No, it's okay uh, if there's no camera, so long as the audio connection is fine. Yeah, so that audio is okay. Okay, great. Um, then I'm going to go around through my screen and ask people to introduce themselves and their affiliation, and also state whether there's anyone else in the room with you, apparently. Uh, Lynette Kawaoka. Aloha, this is Lynette Kawaoka. I'm with Department of Transportation, Airports Division Planning Section, and there's no one else in the room with me. Okay. Uh, Greg Sugawa. Yes. Hi, um, I'm Greg Sugawa. I'm with the City and County uh, Honolulu Department of Transportation Services. Uh, I'm in my cubicle at my office and there's no one in the cubicle with me. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Good, good point. Clarification there. Okay. Uh, Herman Tuiolusenga. Yes. Hi. Uh, Herman Tuiolusenga here with the Airports Planning Transportation Department. Of Hawaii. Happy New Year, all. Thank you. You solo, brother? You by yourself? I'm by myself in my cubicle. Yes. Okay, good. Uh, Tomo Murata? Hi, good morning. This is Tomo Murata. I'm with uh, Hawaii DOT, Statewide Transportation Planning Office, and I'm also by myself. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And Pani Metonga? Hey, Pane Mantonga, Hawaii Upper Engineer Stabilization Fund. It's me, myself, and the rain. Okay, great. Now, I don't have anybody else on my screen. Does anybody else see anybody? Okay. Um, I think we can get to the business of the exemption committee now. And uh, I hope everybody has uh, an agenda with them, uh, a program, as it were. Um, we have three action items before us today. And um, I'm gonna take them out of order because we don't have anybody from the Board of Water Supply here right now. I did, I did inform them via email of this. Um, 
but they're not here. So let's start with the Honolulu Department of Transportation Ron, Services. Ron, I'm sorry. Yes. Uh, you might want to, excuse me for suggesting this, but you might want to approve the minutes first. It's on the agenda as first. Okay. Uh, I'm going to ask that we defer approval of the minutes. Okay. Any, any objections? Okay, let's do that because we got a big list today. Um, sorry. Um, so uh, this action item uh, is to um, consideration of recommendation to the council for concurrence. There were, uh, was published for on November 23rd. And so we've had an abundant time for comments to come in. Certainly the 15 day minimum, that is our policy. And we apparently have no comments. That's correct, Les? Oh, uh, yeah, that's correct. Okay, thank you. Um, so um, we have, um, you all have the list in front of you. It was part of the agenda. And we have Craig Sugawa from Department of Transportation Services here. Um, I'll, I'll uh, ask him to say a few words if he wishes. Hey, Ron, just real quick. Um, so two, two more people joined while you were giving your spiel. Okay. So. Um, I guess we need to interrupt the proceedings to in, introduce them and ask them if there is anyone else in the room with them. So Tracy Lum. Um, just me. Okay. And Tracy, where, what's your affiliation? For the I'm record. At airports. Thank you. And Faith Kaplan. Faith, I don't know if you're responding, but you're on mute. Hi. Uh, good morning. So um, I'm from Department of Transportation Highways. And is there anyone in the room with you? Oh, my dog. Okay, they don't nope, count. That's it. Thank you, Faith. Okay, thank you, uh, Onana, for noticing that. I'm going to detail you to keep an eye on the screen. So if anybody else joins, you can tell me. I think we're close to perfecting a process where there you know, we will no longer be able to conduct any business. Um, it will all be procedures and uh, sunshine law procedures and. I think someone will be happy with that. Who wrote this law? So, um, okay, let's let's proceed. Greg, do you have uh, anything you'd like to say? Uh, no, just uh, thank you for um, you know for reviewing our list. Um, uh, like I said before in, in the previous meeting, you know this this list was reviewed by our entire department. Uh, we did a couple of rounds of comments and. Uh, and, me and information meetings and everybody in our department that at least the ones that participated um, uh, gave their their input. So this is, um, you know, this is a, a, a common a culmination of, of um, everyone's comments within the Department of Transportation Services. We appreciate that and appreciated the discussion we had at the last meeting. I think we all learned uh, quite a bit about uh, the responsibilities of your department and what they're not responsible for, too. Um, I'm going to ask at this time for uh, members of the committee if they have any comments on the list. Yes, Onona. Yeah, I, I just had one comment. You know, I recall I looked back at my notes from the last time that we met with um, DOT, and I thank you so much for your, all your hard work in putting. Um, well, just to just to clarify, this is DTS. Oh, we're on DTS. Okay, sorry, I thought you said DOT. My mistake. I and hope then, I didn't, but okay. I could have. But we are on DTS. <laughs> okay. And in that case, I do not have any additional comments on this. Okay. So thank you to the DTS folks for putting the list together. Okay. Great. Um, uh, Robin Makahala, I see you. You seem to be content so far. Let me ask if there's any members of the public here that would like to comment on the on the list. I'm seeing no one raise their hand or uh, or unmute their mic. I kind of see Tomo doing something. I don't know, but uh, maybe not. Um, so uh, I, I'm seeing no no uh, no comments here. I think it was pretty clear from the last meeting. We didn't have many questions on that either. So uh, 
I think I'm ready to entertain a motion. Robin moves. Any second? Maka'ala, thank you. Uh, any discussion at this point? Kind of point of no return here. Okay, so uh, all in favor, raise your hand, please, so I can just see. Okay, it's unanimous. In that case, we don't have to do a, a roll call. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay, thank you, Jody. Um, all right, so um, Greg, thank you very much. Uh, we are going to uh, forward this to the Environmental Advisory Council, of which we're all members, for our one o'clock meeting uh, with a uh, recommendation to concur with the list. And then that would, uh, that would conclude the process, other than having your list uh, added to those um, that are approved uh, concurred revised list. So thanks very much for attending. Um, I hope you can attend at one. If you can't, I understand everybody's busy, but it might be a good idea if you could. We're going to probably take this up near the beginning of the meeting, right, Onana? Well, we, we do have a presentation by the LUC today, so I think we would get to this, you know, about 1.30. Okay. okay. Just, yeah, in case folks don't want to come on right at one o'clock, you're welcome to, of course, uh, to listen to the presentation by the LUC. Can we, um, can we say for the purposes of, um, of making this easier on everybody that we won't do it before 1.30? That's, that's fine. If the LUC does, is, is a little short or whatever okay yeah. that sounds good so 1 30 or after thank you greg uh any questions or comments uh no nothing from me but uh thank you for for um for reviewing our list um yeah i'll, I'll be there at 1 30 to um to attend the council meeting okay great thank you <clears throat> and um you know now i think um you got actually got through that pretty quickly uh, we have a lot of members of the DOT here. I want to move on to that list. And they're in the same position as the Department of Transportation Services. And uh, that um, their list was published in the November 23rd um, environmental notice, the environmental notice. And so we've had way more than 15 days for comments. Um, we only had one comment. Is that correct, Les? Yeah, that was your comment. That was my comment. Yeah, I was kind of testing the system for one thing, you know, uh, just to see if you made a comment, if it if it if it if it rose back up. But also, um, I just thought it'd be good to get it in our on written record, other than our minutes, uh, what you know, what my concerns or questions were here. Um, and uh, so I think we're um, we're ready to hear from. Uh, someone from DOT, I assume it'll be you, Tomo, uh, to just, if you want to make any opening statements. And if, if you wish, um, you could also take this opportunity to respond to my comments, which I assume you got. Yes, hi, uh, thank you so much. Well, again, thank you for reviewing our um, list. And um, I really appreciate, you know, we got the very good comments from a, a previous exemption committee meeting. And we, after that, we went back to the divisions and divisions made a very quick uh, effort to address uh, those comments. And I believe that uh, you know, before we go out to the public review, those comments have been addressed. Right, <clears throat> but uh, uh, the, I had a subsequent comment after um, that I don't think was was fully addressed. So that one was on the agenda. Did you get a chance to look at that one? It was from me, a written one. Yes, uh, yeah, I took a, a look at that. And- um, Would you like me to reiterate it? Yeah, that would be okay. helpful. <clears throat> Let's see. Ah, what's going on? Okay, sorry. I thought my, uh, I, I thought my computer went dead, which would be terrible. <clears throat> okay. Committee members, have you got the comments in front of you too? Okay. Um, I, I didn't see in the list anything about uh, invasive species that were, um, you know, allow exempt, exempt, 
examples of exemptions to deal with invasive species. You have some good language there about, um, about native species or what I assume to be native species. Um, you call it, you, you discuss wildlife. And I know wildlife has various meaning to various people, but in this sense, I don't think you're talking about mongooses or fire ants in, in wildlife. I think you're talking about nene. And I don't think, you know, a lot of hunters will say, well, pigs and goats and sheep are wildlife too, but I don't think you're talking about them here. So, um, uh, you know, do, do you think you need any language in here for exemptions about um, about dealing with invasive species? And, you know, I'd like to have Maka Allah add a few words here because I think she's she's really up on this. And did you review the list? And do you have did you have similar observations, Maka Allah? Or? I, I did. And I also recall that we had a previous conversation about predator control. Um, for for DOT, it's a it's a, you know an active issue of people dumping um, unwanted animals on state lands, and I'm always looking for predator control programs. And of course, um, invasive species is a is a huge concern for all of us. I you know. Um, in, invasive species can be such a broad category that I can understand the department's reluctance to just say invasive species and not, you know, and not be more specific. Um, I, I get that, but I think, um, you know, naming, a, naming two or three and then saying and the like or, you know, things that are listed, because we do have the Invasive Species Council's list to go by. So maybe just a reference to that list. Um, yeah, no, um, Tomo, is there any language uh, in here at all about dealing with invasive species like, let's say, feral cats? I think we uh, all, you know, included under the wildlife. Uh, if we were Herman, I think Herman has his hand up. Okay, thank you. Thank you for noticing that. Herman? Yes, hi. Uh, for, I just want to explain for invasive species, you know, the airports already has a program. And that's probably why it was not considered. We have, and it is permitted, we go through the permitting process with PLNR, uh, the DOFA, Department of Forestry, Forestry and Wildlife. And then also we have, uh, because it's an airport, these invasive species, some of them are protected. So uh, we have to get special permission from them. And uh, we do have um, federal action. That's how we handle this inside the airport. So federal action, meaning the state personnel cannot handle anything, uh, all these uh, species, only the USDA wildlife. Uh, wildlife biologists are uh, allowed under federal uh, life, uh, permits to manage uh, invasive species on airports. And I think it's the same thing with harbors because it's a, it's a federal uh, uh, ESA, an endangered species uh, uh, invasion. So, but as far as like um, other, like maybe weeds and stuff like that, um, We, we just don't like plants and that's also like USDA. And then uh, the Department of Agriculture um, and the Invasive Species Council also ha already has uh, schemes in place here at the airport for monitoring all these invasive species. So it's already in progress and uh, they are permitted under a separate uh, uh, scheme. So that's yeah. why it was never uh, on the list because they are continuing uh, operational activities. Mahalo, Mahalo, Herman. Um, this is Makaala. I um, year and a half or two ago, um, through our um, legal representation 
notify DOT airports and harbors that um, we were concerned about um, abandoned animals. So these would not necessarily be listed as invasive species, but they are then predators of the endangered species. And um, so that to, to help you get more specific about what the, my concern is, is people tend to, cats tend to hang out at harbors, not so much airports, um, and mongoose tend to be found at harbors and airports. We just found one in Nawin Willie. So um, if if everybody's gonna, you know, I can't we can't have people waiting for the right guy to show up, you know, and we also need some predator control. So I'm looking for active, I'm looking for active control, active trapping of um, abandoned animals such as cats. So there is active control going on at the airports 24-7 and at the harbors also. So it's ongoing operations that we don't know that comes that comes under land use uh, exemption category. It's a permitted activity. Um, so I, and I think that's under the the Hawaii uh, like for example at Hawaii is the habitat conservation plan. So that's a whole different scheme, there. and that's a different approval. So that's why we didn't feel that it's uh, it's a land use issue here. It's operational. And it's already covered under that permit, per, permit. Yeah, well, I understand and I appreciate that. I still think those are actions under Chapter 343, regardless of, of what they're doing. I'm I'm not of the um, of the mind to hang your exemption list up for this. Um, but I I I do think you should um, should continue to consider this. Those are 343 actions. And if, if you undertake anything, a modification of anything, a new program, you're gonna to need to address chapter 343. And um, I would think that they would be exempt. It would be helpful if you already had it in your exemption list, but not necessary. The list is just an example of things you can exempt. I don't wanna beat a dead horse. I think it should have been in there, but it, it, you know, it's your list and um, I'm not going to uh, make an issue of it. Uh, is there are there any other comments from members of the committee or members of the public? Oh, Nauna? Yeah, I had one. You know, I took a look back at our notes from the last meeting that we had you folks at, and on Type One, Part One, Operations, Repair and Maintenance, Six uh, A, Perimeter, Seawalls, Revetments, Groins, and other similar protective structures. Um, again, you know, this applies to repairing and maintaining existing structures, but, you know, given the focus that we've had on these types of structures, um, I had a previous question to you folks about whether it's more appropriate in part two rather than in part one of the exemptions. And I do have a note from our last discussion that DOT was actually okay with putting it in part two, um, but on the list for this meeting, it looks like it's still in part one. So I, I did want to just raise that again to see what DOT's position was on that and whether you know the other committee members had uh, a thought on it. Um, and it, you know, other than the the predator control suggestion, other than that, I do see that the changes we had talked about at the last meeting were made. So I guess maybe I put the question first to the other committee members to see how they feel about this, and then you know if, if DOT can um, explain, I guess why you folks decided to keep it in part one. What page is that on, Onana, okay. could you? On page two, the bottom of page two. Okay, so that's repair and maintain. Yeah, for, for existing structures, right? So, and the reason I had uh, previously brought it up is I just wanted to make sure that we were consistent in how we're handling this for other agencies. Um, I, I recall, and I may be mistaken, Ron, you have a better handle on it, but especially with respect to, you know, seawalls that we were having. I don't know if this is appropriate for part one for de minimis, right? Um, it, it may still be appropriate for an exemption, but it might be something that we actually want to see an exemption notice prepared for um, in the event that it's, you know, kind of an extensive repair, right? But, I, you know, I turn it back to you folks and, and what your opinion is on that. 
Yeah, I, I, I do recall discussing this. Um, my position has been lately anyway, and I, this may contradict things I said earlier, that repair and maintenance is appropriate in part one. But um, I, I still think every time you re repair and maintain a structure like this, you really need to go back to the, um, the exceptions, the clause that we have at the beginning. And that is if you're in a particularly sensitive environment, there, there may be some places within Honolulu Harbor where it's it's just, you know, a no brainer to repair and maintain something. There may be other um, structures that are in a really sensitive area in critical habitat or um, a surfing beach or a place where they're doing cultural practices where repair and maintenance may not be appropriate. And I would hope that you would apply that. But to extend that, my second comment that I supplied to them was related to this. And it was about um, uh, part two exemption, exemption type four item eight. And um, let's see. Type four, and I didn't know, note the page, but item eight, um, where is it? You don't have a lot of part twos, so where's somebody help me with that? I got a Kiowa bags. Let me do a search. I guess it's on page nine. Um, at the it's the fourth item um, from the top. Okay, so it's type three, not type four then. Yeah, you're right. That's what screwed me up. Okay, thank you. Uh, construct new shoreline protection systems. And uh, my point is that um, I don't know how, um, you know, how, how you're going to be exempt, able to exempt very many of these. If you're talking about, like I said in my comment, you know, one little single area that got where you need something new, where it's just, you know, 50 feet or something of a, of a new structure, and it's not a sensitive area, then I could see it. But these would normally be um, larger structures. I don't think you're not throwing one sandbag down, you're throwing a, a couple hundred or a couple thousand. Um, uh, revetments, you know, they tend to be kind of large. So could you guys address that and also maybe address what Onana had to say too. And I'll just reiterate from my comment that I'm not opposed to you folks having it on the list. I, I just think it might be more appropriate to move into a part two rather than a, a part one de minimis, um, uh, unless you give me a reason why, you know, it, it, it's fine as de minimis. Okay, I think uh, you know we need to discuss that with uh, highways, and I might have to get back with you on that. Okay, that's acceptable. Um, Makala, please. Uh, thank you, Chair. I would just add one thing, Tomo. It, it you know if if it's you know really de minimis and it's really small, that's not what we're talking about here. But the other thing that's been coming up here on Kauai is better technology, better science. And so I'm, I'm concerned about just replacing something with like kind when that would appear, might appear to be de minimis, but like kind is not as good as the next iteration. Um, and, and we're facing that a lot here. And, and I, I'm trying to support and encourage DOT um, creativity and, and um, willingness to um, progress with technology. Yeah, and how that interacts with the exemption, um, you know, procedures is that if it's de minimis, the public has no opportunity to know about it or comment on it. And I think what, you know, when, when, it, when you provide an exemption notice, you know, people that are watching can see, oh, they're planning to replace something at name an area, Makala. Highway, 
<laughs> to Neo Highway in Hanalei, they're planning to replace something. And, uh, you know, we have, you know, we have some thoughts about that. So, um, you know, I think what you're seeing is that we're, we're all just a little bit uncomfortable with the level of scrutiny that's being applied to the things that are happening on the shoreline. I also, well, I want to, I want to be cognizant of the fact that these are not things that you guys are trying to, you know, pull the, pull the wool over us or something. You're responsible for these vital facilities that we have in the state. And, and, you know, I understand that. I appreciate it. I think we all do. And we don't want to make your jobs harder just for the sake of, of, uh, you know, some checking some box, but I think three of us here and perhaps Robin as well, he hasn't weighed in here are just a, a little uncomfortable about the level of scrutiny that's being applied to repair and maintenance and, um, and new structures on the shoreline. And I think it might be good if Tomo, if you did go back with highways and, you know, also airports has probably got something to do with this too, but I certainly harbors does and, and uh, discuss our concerns a little more fully and see, you know, I mean, I hate to put this off, but to see if you can have a more systematic response to, to these comments. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, intent was, uh, I suspect the intent was a very small minor repair on the life and safety issue. So, and then if it's extensive repair, you know, we will have to go to the environmental review process. But uh, yeah, I know, I know you raised that the question before and then coming back again. So, uh, we'll yeah, definitely need to uh, cons uh, we'll bring it back. But uh, well, again, I think Harman has a hands up. So, okay, uh, yeah, yeah Herman said it, yeah, for a while, or I don't know. I'm not good at this, Herman. Yeah. Uh, so I just wanted to add uh, something about the discussion here, like uh, at airports. So we had a, a, a case where uh, we had an engineer out here in Honolulu. They wanted to replace replace just gathering baskets. These are baskets with rocks. And that was fine. Yes, it's pretty much just a repair of a, of a section that was done. And based on that, it was very minor. And we said, yeah, that's fine. We, but we did declare an exemption for that. I think just for our records. Uh, but um, as a type one. But that said, if it were like the, gonna, if the repair was going to require more expensive work, that would then that means it, we will need to uh, check with Army Corps of Engineers, and that will trigger uh, this uh, a more involved, uh, probably even if it's exempted uh, consultation. So that's uh, my response about. Uh, uh, the airport, uh, uh, that that matter. And then uh, uh, why don't you get back to, to the invasive species? Uh, and they have the conservation plan that we manage all the wildlife at. Uh, just wanted to point out that the habitat conservation plan completed a, uh, an EIS, I believe. And, um, on two, and it was published, I think the, the draft was published in July of 2016. So just wanted to, so therefore the activities we're conducting at the airports now, now we, uh, they're covered under that, uh, that uh, 343 study for the HCP. Well, thank you. Um, thank you, Herman. I, I kind of vaguely remember that and that's good information to have. I guess I'd still be concerned about any new activities that potentially could arise in the next 20 years or so. Uh, so, so I, you know, I, I still have the, that, but I realized that you, you folks did some good, a good job there. And also thank you very much for that example that you provided. And uh, what I think, you know, I would like to see a little more is some kind of distinction in your exemption list that, that provides some, um, you know, some threshold that says if it's, if it meets this, then we're willing to uh, de minimis it. If it meets this, where it needs to go up for repair and maintenance, or for new seawalls, if it's this type, we can possibly exempt. If it's bigger, we can't. And have some. I realize it may be hard to quantify it. Your your, your language may be a little squishy um, oh. about it, but I'd still like to see something in there instead of just um, 
you know, you can put any new shoreline protection systems in under an exemption. That just seems too much. I, um, I, uh, I, I agree with, believe it or not, I agree with Maka'ala as well as with you, Ron, and, and with you, <laughs> uh, um, Yeah, I know. Um, I, but I, I also think, you, you, I'm really glad you raised that second comment in particular, Ron, because I think the council members would raise it as well. Um, I, I can't imagine going to the council if people had read the exemption list, not getting a little bit concerned about this, especially where it says new shoreline protection systems, when that's been a major issue for us over the last couple of years. So I thank you for bringing that up as a comment. I, I, I think um, the idea of them going back and redoing it, and I like your sense, your recommendation about trying to set some limits. I think that's really a good idea. So. Thank, thank you, Robin. Uh, Makala. I just have, yes, I really like the idea of, a, of some sort of threshold or some sort of way for us to categorize that, that, that we bump into that almost every day around here. I, I would like to say that some of the work that DOT um, is proposing to do has done, for example, in Hanalei, is not just shoreline, but riverbank. Um, and um, it's the same concern, the same issue. Um, so I want to be sure that our language is appropriate. I realize their reference there is shoreline, but um, it, it does also impact riverbanks. Um, the second thing I want to say is that what we've bumped into here many times over the last several decades is that when there's an emergency declaration in place, a lot of these other reviews and extra reviews don't apply. And so, um, much of this work gets done under the, the aegis of, a, of an emergency deck and um, the ability to comment or react or respond or suggest um, is very limited. And so when it's, when it's in part two, at least we know we have something that, we, that will let us know when something's proposed. Well, not if it's under the emergency, but yeah. Um, it's really hard. It's really hard because they can just do whatever. Yeah, kind of a separate issue, but um, um, th thank you for that comment, uh, Herman. There, um, uh, you know, are there any comments from uh, any members of the DOT staff or, or anybody else who's still on the line? I think Pani checked out, and I think we only have uh, airports folks on. Would you like to make any other comments? Well, from airport's perspective, I, I appreciate the comments, and I think uh, I, 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 said, I agree about the comment about threshold. Yeah, we can. Uh, there has to be some limit, as you all stated, and we all understand that too. So, Th thank you. A, thank it, you. It is a good uh, distinction, distinction. Thank you. You know, and that's and true for any any uh, any type of list or something. And I think you know uh, we we don't want to be unreasonable. You could look at any any item and kind of say, oh, there should be a threshold. But on this one, I think it really it really does that. Um, you know, given that uh, committee members, um, God, Faith has her hand up. Okay, I'm sorry. Faith, okay, Hi. sorry. I'm so bad sorry. at this. Hi, Faith. I'd be the only one from Highway still on, um, and they're probably uh, the people who aren't here better able to respond. But um, we have struggled with this exemption type, the repairs of existing facilities. And there are times where repairs of existing facilities are de minimis. And it isn't, if it were to be in a sensitive environment, then of course this list is not applicable. And if it were a new construction um, or a new development of new structures and facility type three, part two, construct new shoreline protection systems. Again, these would be just by definition smaller. And I, I hear that you want us to put some sort of um, threshold on what is a, a smaller structure. And I, I really am resisting that personally only because it's very difficult. And if we say so many linear feet and we have a project that's five feet over that, it just becomes a little uh, difficult to manage. Um, and so the point is that we would, own, we would not 
have this on our list to misuse it. I'm not saying this very well, but at some point, um, we'd like the benefit of the doubt that um, if it's if it warrants an EA and it's in a sensitive environment, we would do one. And if it's um, a minor new structure and meets the definition of a new structure and facility, then you know I I think th that we need to be given credit for making that judgment. But um, I understand that shoreline protection is a big issue now, and everybody's concerned. Um, but that's just my personal point of view. Well, Faith, I, I think you actually said it very well, and I appreciate I appreciate what you said. And I and I do uh, I, I you know before I ever made this comment, I was kind of you know sensitive to that. I was thinking about it, but I thought I'd make the comment anyway because I really feel I, re I really feel it's needed. So. Um, you know, what I'd like to do is to, to see you guys give a little more attention to the comments that we had here and and come back. And I don't know if that's if we maybe need to make a motion about that, but um, that would be my preference. Maybe um, after you systematically answer the comments to us, maybe those will stand just as they are. If if you make a good enough argument. Um, about it and you say it's impractical to do it and you give us a lot of reasons why uh, same with the invasive species um, stuff then you know you know I, I would give it I would be willing to give it another look to think about it but I'd, I'd like to have uh, those comments more systematically considered and um, and addressed and um, I'm sorry to um, I'm sorry to bring you back a couple times. We've we've had some good discussion so far. I know you've spent a lot of time on it, but um, I, I feel you know that's that's my personal preference. But I'm just one person, and I'm not making any motions since I'm the chair here. So uh, I don't know if the committee feels the same way or wants to make that motion or a different motion. Makalo, I I would move, chair. Thank you for that. I I do appreciate the effort the work that's involved. Not that we don't, that we don't, and that not that we don't understand how much work it is. But this is critical stuff, and um, and we need to do our job as well. I I would move that um, we ask um, them to come back one more time with some response, to, especially to the issue of threshold, and maybe use um, that opportunity to um, seek out other examples of thresholds. Uh, that might fit for them. That might that might work. Um, I I she used you used a really good example, um, faith of linear feet, and I I think maybe there's some language that it could be something like linear feet with a caveat of you know some science applied to it or something. Um, but I would move I would move to have them. Please consider the, these comments and, and this discussion, and and come back to it. Okay, I think I'll take that last bit as a uh, as a motion. That last sentence as a motion, <laughs> uh, and a, but not not that I didn't appreciate the rest of the comments. Is there a second to that? Okay, Makaalo, and then Robin seconds. Um, is there more discussion? The only yeah. thing I I wonder if it would. Oh, sorry, Anna. Go ahead. No, go ahead. You can go. No, I was going to say, I was like, you know, yeah, again, apologies to DOT, but I, I think this does warrant, you know, maybe coming back just one more time for a little bit clarity on these points. And, um, you know, I'll just reiterate that from my perspective, I'm not opposed to having these things again on your list. I, I do think, you know, for the second one that we're talking about for the new facilities, if that's appropriately, um, I believe in a part two, Right. which is fine. And I, for the first one I brought up for, you know, type one, part one, six, a, I think, I think that personally, I would be more comfortable if that was in a part two. So I just ask that you consider that when you folks go through it one more time. And, and thanks for taking the time to do that. Okay. Um, I'm going to ask one more time if DOT wants to comment. Um, uh, as part of the discussion. I, I think I cut Robin off earlier. So maybe if that's Robin right. Robin. Okay. okay. I, I, you know, clearly it's not my my uh, uh, knowledge here, but I, I wonder if 
um, in consideration of, and, and Faith, you make a really good point about, you know, the dollars. If I wonder, I'm sorry, about the feet. I wonder if maybe the threshold has to do with budget. Maybe it's, you know, uh, if, no, Maka Onan is saying no, bad idea. Okay, never mind. Well, well I, 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 I just hope that you give it some thought. I, I don't think we're going to come up with the solutions here. The solutions probably lie with DOT. You guys see our sensitivities. And um, I think you can you can think of some potential solutions that work for you. And if you can't, you can't. And you tell us that. You say, hey, we, we, we went back. We talked about it for a month. And guys, it's still on the table exactly the way it was. That's how we feel it is. And, you know, we respect that and we'll reconsider it if you give us your rationale. Um, Faith? I just wanted to clarify. So if we moved... Um, all shoreline protection, whether it's maintenance under type one or type three new structures, if we moved anything related to shoreline protection to part two, that would address your concerns? Part of them, it, it still doesn't deal with large um, shoreline protection systems that, that, would, that, that would someone- probably is not necessarily in a sensitive area, you know, and, and okay. sensitive area is hard to define, but I mean, even small shoreline protection systems are by definition in a sensitive area, you know, cause they're on the shoreline and uh, mm -hmm. they affect shoreline processes. And, um, you know, there's no shoreline structure that doesn't affect shoreline structures, a process or almost not, you know, I can think of something as a, as a, former coastal geomorphologist, yeah, there's some, but most of them are not. And, um, and so, you know, when we're opening ourselves up to, you know, very, possibly very large things here being exempted, I, you know, it just gives me pause. And I'd just like you guys to think about it a little more. Okay, so you're talking about projects that, uh, you think are warrant an EA because they're that large. We're not talking about the distinction between part one and part two. Well, of course, you know? we're talking about both. These okay. both came up. Uh, Onana oh, okay. in particular brought up the part one, part two. I'm bringing up the EA, non-EA. And okay. I just feel that this category is too broad. Um, it, it includes too many, too many potentially large projects. All right. That was one could argue this isn't sensitive. You know, um, and and so I, I would just like a little more thought given to that. Okay, and, and I'll expand on the reason I was getting, you know, kind of I'm harping on part one, part two is because at least with a part two, you're required to do an exemption notice. So say you guys think, okay, hey, this is we're going to do a new seawall this this warrants an exemption and you go ahead and do it but really it should have been an ea if that was in a part one we'd have no way of knowing that right we'll never get notice of it the public would never get notice of it but if at least if it's in part two the exemption notice is published and then that challenge can be made right so okay, that, that that's why sense. i'm comfortable with the part two but you know ron's point is a good one and um, you know, DOT, of course, you folks have the expertise in your projects and what needs to be done. And, you know, if something is truly, if something truly warrants an EA, of course, that should be done and not, you know, swept into an exemption. Yeah. And, and we trust you to do that, essentially. But it's just the, the, the language of the exemptions, you know, it means something. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, it means something. there's a certain faith put into it by the public and by other agencies and by our council. And so words do matter here. And, you know, I don't, I want to put, you know, too fine a point on it, but I want to make sure. And I also, you know, Onan, I personally feel that there are some uh, uh, repair and maintenance things that, that do warrant um, a part one. And so that's why I feel a threshold would be important there. Okay, um, great. So, you know, we're, we're not unanimous in our thoughts yeah, here. Right. I think we can come up language to, um be agreeable to all. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Faith, for and... being willing to, to make the effort. I know it's extra work, and I really do appreciate, I just want to say one more time, DOT, you guys are, are all-stars here. You know, you really are. Mm -hmm. You're environmental all-stars, and we, we appreciate it. And, uh, you know, not all the agencies give the, 
the kind of consideration that you do, especially when you have such a difficult task. So please don't take it the wrong way. You know, I think we're, we're kind of, we're almost out of time here. And um, if there's no objections, I'm going to uh, ask for a, um, I'm going to ask for a vote on this measure to, to defer it and have you folks come back uh, with some uh, rationale, uh, you know, potentially new decision or not, but a rationale about your thoughts on these comments that we've made. So all in favor? Aye. Okay, it's unanimous. We're not gonna take a roll call vote. Um, thank you again, DOT personnel for coming. I really appreciate it. Um, when you're done cursing us, <laughs> I think you'll have, I think you'll have a, a good discussion and, and we look forward to seeing you. Please let me know, um, uh, I guess through less, uh, the official communication, if you wanna be on the next agenda. Uh, and let me know about that within the next three weeks, because we have to actually we have to have the agenda together fairly early. I think our next meeting is February 1st. Is that correct, Onana? I believe, yes, first Tuesday, that's correct. Yeah, so if you could let me know by, say, January 20th, if you want to be on the next agenda. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. We'll do. Yeah, thank you for your consideration. I really All right. Appreciate. Thank you so much, Tomo. Thank All you, right. Everybody. Um, committee, we have, we have one other thing to take up, but we don't have, um, the board of water supply here. Um, they have a lot going on right now. Yeah. The only comment I have on their list right now is, you know, the, the very first paragraph, they say pursuant to HAR 11200.1-8, I think, um, it, that should be 11200.1-15. So other than that, I, I think we actually did go through the list before, correct? Did we, have we, we've seen this one. We've right? had it, we've had it before us, I think okay. one time, but have we, um, yeah, Board of Water Supply, sure. I mean, this is, we've had this up for comment, right? This is the, oh no, sorry. This is the get published. I've seen it a million times. Let me say that. Okay. Um, I don't. I think we were gonna have it on the, did we have it on the agenda before and they didn't come? And so maybe, we decided to, to do it. Maybe that maybe that was it. So I, I guess we'll we'll have another chance to take a look at it. You know, at the um, next meeting. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we're almost out of time. So I think we couldn't really have a substantive discussion. And I think um, I, I really wanna have board of water supply here. So I think I th okay. I'm just gonna inform them that we're going to put it, we're going to defer it to the next meeting and really try to get them here. Okay. Uh, you know, Dominic's been responsive, DS of BWS has been responsive to me, but he did not respond to this last email. And I, I just think they're so busy with Red Hill mm -hmm. that, um, that they're not able to do other things. Yeah. Um, so. Likely, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, great. Well, um, um, you know, I think even in terms of the meeting minutes, I, I don't know. Do we have enough time? Oh, now you need some time to get ready for the 1 p.m. meeting, right? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I looked at the minutes. I guess the, the only comment I had on the minutes, and it's not a change that needs to be made unless Maka'ala wants it, but, um, you know, when you, you list the members present, you have all the Okina in her name, but then throughout the rest of the document, you don't. So mm. um, for me, it's just a consistency thing and technically a spelling error. So I will defer to Maka'ala if she's comfortable with it because it's her name. But that would be my only comment on both sets of the meeting minutes. <laughs> Mahalo, Mahalo, Unana. It is technically a spelling error, but um, yeah. but I'll, I'll I'll let it slide this time, and we'll pay attention next time. Mahalo. Okay, sorry, I you know it gets um. Okay, it is what it is. It's hard typing this up. Oh, thank you for being so thank you for being so prompt with your minutes, Ron. I think you you do a great yeah. job with it. So I mean, that's the only thing I could pick on. I thought the minutes were great. Otherwise, you know. Okay. So. All right. Um, should probably take them one at a time. Um, Move to approve the August minutes. Okay, second. Second. Oh no, thank you. Any further discussion? Okay, everybody approve. Raise your hand. Okay, are unanimous? Now the, the other minutes. Move to approve the November minutes. Thank second. you so much. Okay, all in favor? 
Right. Thanks, guys. Thanks for reading the minutes. I, I do want to say that. I appreciate that. It helps. You know, I go, th I th thanks to Les, you know, he records it. And so I go through the whole meeting again and um, get to relive these wonderful moments in my life and then uh, and then do it. But it's actually it's actually a good thing. It helps. It, it really helps me. So it is good for you guys to read the minutes to do and and keep track of what we're doing and doing it promptly, uh, you know, it, it helps us recall things. So I'll try to get these out for the next one, too. Okay. Um, you know, we really are uh, just about out of time. I know everybody has to take a bathroom break or something. So I'm going to adjourn this meeting unless there's any uh, any objection. OK, thank you so much, guys. And we'll see you uh, soon. Bye. Bye bye.